Welcome back, gamers. Rick here with Game Trade Media, coming to you live from the Origins Game Fair 2018 showroom floor, the exhibit hall. I've got Darcy from Monty Cook Games here today to show us some awesome stuff. Welcome, Darcy. I am so jazzed to be here. Oh, yeah? my goodness. And uh, I feel like we've got a whole other character that I had to lug over here, a tiny yes. a tiny RPG child I, I, that we've born over at Monty Cook Games. So. It's about the size of a child. It really is, yeah. yes. A toddler, even. <laughs> so I'm excited for you to meet both of us. <laughs> it's amazing. So I remember when this was a, a Kickstarter, and this was like the big thing, the black right. box. Right, You know. Uh, so tell us all about, this is Invisible Sun, right? Right. So tell uh, us all about it. I'm happy to. So this is uh, Meet the Black Cube. Cube. Uh, this is the unit of game that Invisible Sun, the role-playing game, comes in. Uh, it is a game of surreal fantasy oh. that posits that the world around us, this lovely convention center, you and I, mm -hmm. is a lie. <laughs> what? It's true. And the real world, the actuality, is a place where magic yet exists, where there are uh, lots of secrets and discoveries to be found. It's, it's set in this sort of uh, fascinating town called, the ac called Saturine, where... Uh, where, where obviously magic is rampant and where uh, there's sort of 1930s New York City feel where okay. people are having soirees and there's sort of a, you know, there's like line telephones that are run by the ether through which ghosts travel. So it's got, uh, uh, it's got a lot going for it as a setting, okay. but it's got even more going as a gaming experience, which I really appreciate. Right. Well, let's, let's see what it's all about. Uh, let's move the box all the way yeah. here. And, and I don't want everything here to drop so much, but I'm sure... It, it will. It will. <laughs> we'll there we go. Boop. Man, these, these books They're are great. They're hefty. They're really good, though. Cool. All righty. So we'll put the black cube away. Oh, this, oh. we have just had, oh, aha. Aha. Another A book. trap. Look at, the, look at the artwork on here, everybody. Check this out. This artwork is amazing, as all of the uh, Monty Cook games have been known to be just filled with amazing artwork from not just this, but Numenera and uh, uh, Gods of the Fall. Oh, for sure. Yeah, are amazing artwork. Yeah. So where, are we, where do we go from here? Okay, well, there are books. I think people uh, expect some books when Ooh. they get in a role-playing <laughs> game. Yes, so uh, we, I really love these because they're, um, they're black-lined pages. They're all, <laughs> everything's a different form factor than, than traditionally, so I think they're like 10 by 10. And... Uh, the layout is beautiful, and mm -hmm. like like this is a game of secrets, right? It's a game where you play uh, various magic users who are basically magical nerds, right? They're interested okay. in discovering things and studying and finding out new things. Now, I know that you and I have to, you know, use our creative imaginations to sure. imagine what a nerd would be like, but right. I, I believe in us. So. I I'm, I live that life, <laughs> so it's. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, the four books uh, draw you through character creation, of course, okay. but also many kinds of different magic. So the key is sort of, you know, make you make your Visle, make your magic user, okay. which I will dig into how, you know, I, I think something that's really special about this game is that magic is cool. Magic is fundamentally cool. I won't mm -hmm. apologize for it. No. I'm going to take that stand and, and stay there. So... I, I think this is a game where everyone gets to be magic users, gets to interact with the cool thing, but uh, interact in really, really different ways. And I think those different ways accommodate very different kinds of play styles, sure. which is really wild. Okay. Um, or, or lack of play styles for people who just want to really dabble. So right. or I'll take I mean, it. if someone has never really experienced a role-playing right. game and this is their first time, yeah. their lack of experience in itself can be a very fun... It will sing, yeah. yeah, yeah it, very it cool. invites you in like that. Ah, I love it. So you've got... Uh, should, I, should I dig into what kind of magic users? Is that helpful? Yes, it, it's very helpful for me because okay. I have to know. Uh-huh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So uh, there are five orders of magic, okay. uh, or four and one that rejects all order, of course. Uh, so you have your weavers. Oh, I should show you the, the character sheets because they're very different, but yes. I may have to... As I st I'll tell you as I dig. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Super cool. So the first one I'm going to talk about are, are sort of your traditional, I'm Gandalf, I'm a Vancean caster. I, uh, I, I pull down a spell in my mind. They often have fanciful names, you know, uh, let's see, like such as blank, which is very helpful. Um, they have fanciful names, you know, somebody, something, something, something right? Something in the gray. Uh, exactly. Something the Troll Slayer. You right, know. exactly. So there's Vancey in casting. Or Zach Gandolfini. Which I think is the... <laughs> 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 obviously. <laughs> so your your Vance character sheet is... Uh, 
is all has all of this grid paper uh, look to it, and that is because you have a, a mental map of your of your mind where you store your spells. So that's a, a character sheet on the inside. Okay. So there's this whole theme around being that kind of character, and you get these cards that are your your spells, and you physically arrange them in your mind map, uh, which is super cool. So okay. you get a little square, you arrange them. We have uh, Abra's physique. We have uh, I can't pronounce that, vaporous coercion, and you have different sizes, so you can, you can stack them up differently as you arrange them in your mind, and of course you spend them and, and put them out, out of the, the mind Al map. Author solves vaporous coer coercion. <laughs> uh, who who come on, comes up with these names? Uh, is, is it Monty and Bruce and Shanna and all them? It might be, yeah. A you lot guys. Of a lot of good stuff from all of them. So, so that's your Vance, which I think is a really interesting take on it. Nice. But uh, let me quickly tell you the other ones, right? So makers are for people who want to make magical items. Ooh. And they've got like drafting paper look to their, their character tome. Um, it looks really, really different. And yeah. When you look at someone else's character sheet, you kind of get the sense that there are secrets they have that you don't. And that's really satisfying right. as a player. Um, weavers are, are for a player type that I think all of us have, which is... Um, they're, they want to do some magical thing that no way would anyone ever put in a book, right? Very specific, very creative, very off the wall, sure. Im like very improv style uh, okay. player. So what they have instead of spells proper is our weaves. So they have concepts that they weave together. Okay. So um, let's see. Yes. So like the idea of freedom and maybe the idea of movement. Okay. Uh, and they would, uh, or, or freedom and ice, and they could create like an, a, a ramp that makes them move faster, right? They okay. create a... Uh, so they, it's very, um, it's totally free improv, form. very free form. Nice. It, it kind of reminds me of um, if you ever read the David Eddings, ah. the Malorian, and the and uh, and and stuff like that. How um, Bel Bel uh, Belgarath, they basically just it's 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 mind and word, cool. and they just they think it they and they say the word and it happens. Oh man. I have to ask Monty if that's where he drew it Ooh, from. Yeah. Uh, the final one is Goetics, which are all about summoning circles, right? For okay. People who want to uh, summon demons and angels and ghosts and all sorts of other things, having familiars. But my favorite of all is the apostate, which is what I've played. And it is, uh, there is no indication of oh. where you should write anything. It is completely free form. It is... Uh, this is the lack of order. This is the, I reject all order, and I'm going to have a totally, I'm just going to dig through these over a thousand spells Ooh. and pick and choose my own, you know, dabbling in divination today and, and other kinds of... Uh, Necromancy tomorrow. Exact, exactly. Okay. So all right. uh, I, I really like that. Um, okay. But I think that's only one facet of the game, right? And yeah. it's it's not an expected that you should only care about, oh, I'm a Vance. That, that's what I do. So there's, sure. like, like any Cypher System game, you have a character sentence. So mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a stoic Vance who, uh, <laughs> who uh, bears an orb. So you have a forte, a special cool thing about you, uh, which people might remember from Cypher System. Yeah. So, and, and what I like about this is that the same advancement points you get, uh, you can you can really dive deep into being advanced, being the best advanced you can be. You can dive deep into this weird orb that you bear and unlocking its special powers. You could spend that that th those currency on souping up your house. Everyone has a house that they discover more okay. secrets about as time nice. goes on. So I, I like that flexibility. Now I see that. So we went through the character sheets, but I see out here we got a, a game board <laughs> with yeah. a huge hand statue thing on it. What's that all about? And how many fingers does this hand have, if you could tell our dear audience here? It would appear to have all of them. <laughs> all of them and? One more. And one more. Yeah. The six-fingered hand. This is the Testament of Sons. It is an in-game item that all wow. Visley, all magic users, except apostates, of course, uh. use. And uh, and it, it, it means certain things in the game. It's sort of this mad philosophy of magic, but mostly it's a big, cool, weird hand. Uh, <laughs> and, it's, and it's heavy. It, it is. This it is probably what, between this and the books, that's your weight. Uh, this it's thing is a significant, yeah, yeah. it's got some heft. And so what it, it what its function is in the, in the actual mechanics is that it holds a sooth card. Uh, so this is my absolute favorite part of the game, so okay. I'm, I'm excited we're getting to sooth cards. Um, I probably jumped way ahead, but I, I just had to No, ask. no. I, we, you have to address the giant hand yes. in the room. Uh, <laughs> that's fabulous. So, so, like you said, there's a game board. The hand goes on it. So the game board is the Path of Suns. Um, as, as magic, it represents the, the flux of magic. As okay. magic shifts around, it sort of enhances certain kinds of magic, and it uh, diminishes others in addition to doing other things. So sure. 
whenever someone casts a spell in gameplay, you lay down a card and magic Ooh. sort of fluxes Close. around. Exactly. Okay. So you get some bonuses or maybe some minuses, and it's okay. really lovely. Nice. Um, the the hand holds the one that remains in play. It's the it's the invisible sun. Ah. So each circle on there is a map of both the human soul, if you want to get philo philosophical about it, sure. and also the different suns, which are kind of like different um, reflections or worlds of the actuality, the real world where okay. magic exists. Okay. So you can travel the red sun to the green sun. So red is where destruction and demons live, and okay. green is where uh, life. life and yeah. uh, you, you get it, you get, get it. it. Silver is creation, and gold is transformation, okay. etc. So like as a player, right. you can go visit those suns, but also you get that that sense of the the sun, magic moving through the suns as you play. Generally. Okay, I love it. Yeah, but man, this is cool. All right, I want. I think we should jump into a, a brief demo. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So. This is a, a wild game where, which is really hard to run sort of one-shot demos for sure. because uh, of a, a really, really smart mechanic, I think, that I, that I adore. And that is that players, how, how, you know, how you discover things, how you level up in this game is by uh, choosing character arcs. So you, I, I want to uh, solve a mystery. Right. I want to make a friend. I want to start a business. I want to fall from grace. So there are even negative character arcs. Okay. Um, so players really come to the table with a lot of, of stuff they want to do, but they may not be able to do it all at a regular session. So right. this is a game that really celebrates the times when we're able to get together in the, in the same room at the same table and touch the weird hand and touch all the thousand cards. Speaking of which, I have to do it again. You have to touch it again. Ah, I'm sorry. That's, that's so the law. so good. <laughs> and look at the sculpting on this uh, yeah. as you look as a close-up to it. You've got runes up the wrist here onto the palm ah big old rune of some sort yeah and it's super cool yeah the back there yeah this is such a cool what a, i mean just a cool talking piece too it is that could draw new players in it <laughs> yes. physically yes. like pulling them in they're like what is this oh you must sit and play with us now yeah exactly One of us. and <laughs> and in addition to that right for people who already feel like they know the game, there are so many secrets hidden into tiny details in the book. I don't know what this means. I'm sure it means something. I'm sure it uh, does. I'm very excited to understand what this means. So even, uh, even even from a GM perspective, if you have the books, like it's sort of a part of the game to you you as a person at mm -hmm. the table sort of uncovering truths of this setting and of this right. world. So it's uh, really delightful. So good. All right, let's, let's, let's do a demo. All right, so what kind of magic user are you? Um, I feel like I would be a crafter. Nice, a maker. I, Heck I'm yeah. a maker because I want to build something that it will live on and be my legacy. Oh, I love, I love that. Yeah. You're using, you're using some good words here. Yeah. Uh, excellent. So you're Cyber a maker. System. Cyber system. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. So you're a maker, yes. and uh, you and I are getting coffee because in this, in this hypothetical world, I'm positing because it's the shadow anyway. It's a right. lie. It's it a lie. It might as well. Uh, we're getting coffee, talking about something completely different. We have our Friday game night or, or whatever, uh, and, and you play a maker, and you have all these shared character arcs that are interweaving, and you have you know your friends at the table. But you're also a, a sneaky maker, okay? Ooh. You, and you've been slighted by someone in Saturine, right? There's okay. this guy, and you really want to stick it to him. Uh, and you, he slighted you in some way, and you, want, and you say, you know, we're having coffee, totally unrelated to the game. Right. And you're like, oh, Darcy. Why I want to pull a heist on this guy and, yeah. and you know make him lose face. I'm going to steal this magical creature chained up in his basement. Okay, y you've heard right. rumors of. Yeah, so because I wanted this creature previously, and he, and he he you know duped me out of the deal. Exactly. And I need it for this item I'm trying to create. Exactly. Uh, one of its one of its fangs drips yeah. an important uh, crafting component. Yes. <laughs> what, a, it's, what a jerk. So <laughs> I'm going to be a monster and always have a sooth deck in my, in my okay. purse. However, if you are not a monster like me, there is an app that comes with the game that sh has the sooth deck in it. So okay. what you can just pull it up on your phone and you say, all right, so even though we don't, we're at a coffee shop, we don't have the black cube, we don't have the Path of Suns and all the cards, but we have a sense of what your character is. Right. And uh, you're a maker and, you know, you want to get back at this guy. So... I would say, first we just sort of narrate it a little bit. So this is what's called a development mode, where we're away from right. the table doing a little scene that pushes your, your character arcs forward, gives you sort of an intimate story experience sure. that you know, maybe the other players wouldn't want to pull a heist. And right. so rather than hogging that spotlight, you get to have what you want to do away from it. So, nice. all right, so there's this mansion. Of course, it's got magical wards. It's got people in it. Of what's course. your plan here? Well, I would case the joint, as Ooh, always. Yes. You, have, you know, I would uh, take my friend's 
cat for a walk because cats love leashes. They do. And I'd walk the cat around the, the, the mansion uh, proper. Nice. Get a better feel of what his security systems are. All right. Identify any wards that I could easily break and uh, find a point of entry after, you know, a proper good casing. Draw a card for night one. All right. Hunter. <laughs> ooh, ooh. That, all right. The suit deck is, is not actual magic. <laughs> But however, <laughs> excellent. So the hunter's got this uh, lady with a mysterious device, and uh, she's looking down at this panther a bit. So there's really, there are different artists for each family of the suit deck, which is kind of like a tarot deck. Mm -hmm. And so if I were, uh, if I just want to be quick about it, I might say, I might just look at the number, right? Uh, from a zero to nine, because sure. this uses D10s. Uh, eight's pretty good. It sounds like you probably did a good job casing the joint. Nice. But what I like to do is look a little deeper at that meaning Ooh. with, uh, and sort of look at the divination and the specifics of what that is. So hunter sounds really good for what you're about to do. So its meanings are nature, death, conflict, survival, seeking a goal, and no cats. cats. Sooth deck is not magic. Uh, can we have that <laughs> header not? running is at the it bottom? Not? <laughs> <laughs> it is certainly sarcastic, though. It will tease you. So, uh, so I think what that means is uh, is not is is not only that you've cased the joint, but night one you have you have actually you figured out where in that mansion it is. You've you've isolated your prey, and you know the perfect entrance to get there. Nice. So, yeah. So draw one more card. Boom. Let's find out what happens okay. on night two as you actually enter the place. It is time to do the thing. And so. Yeah, how this works as a GM is I, you know, we talk through sort of the plan, we narrate until we come to a point where right. both you and I are curious how this either goes horribly wrong, right. goes horribly right, or or something else happens. Right. right? So I'm going to grab my father's boot black and so I'm very shadowed up and get ready to do this thing. Awesome, and of course you've got magical devices out the wazoo. Angel, the angel. lovely, super. Hopefully cool. this is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's certainly a high number. It's a defender, which is a special type of card. All right. And actually, if you look, there's uh, little symbols on the side yeah. that represent the four families, and you would okay. have an affinity to one of them. Okay. So, th it's it's really it's such a delight as a player to get to see your card come up, right? The card yeah. that that means a lot to you. So I would look up Angel. I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, and as the more I've been running this, the more I've uh, I have a sense, you know, a gasp when a certain card gets drawn. Judgment, safety, assistance, light, and justice. And cats. And cats. Is that right? Yeah, you're totally right. What the heck? Excellent. All right. I made a good choice in cats. Our <laughs> <laughs> you totally did. So I think what happens is you get down there. Uh, you you blacked, uh, blacked your face so you totally can sneak by. You have a fancy little key that lets you write in any, any yeah. mundane locks. And you find yourself down in that area. And what you find out is is in fact not that it's just some magical creature. He has an angel chained up down there. Ooh. And uh, you are able to free it, and it is going to help you seek justice on this guy in an nice. even more way, right? Wow. So wh what I like about these is that it, it, it's quick, and it, you know you just wanted to pull a heist, but you've, you've now had the help of an angel. That's something you can bring back to the table. Right. So That's super cool. I love it. And as far as story storytelling goes, it, it, it does give you some guidance. Right. Uh, yes. So you don't always have to be like, Oh, I got to come up with a right. scenario, deep scenario. I can just be like, all right, this is going to help facilitate fleshing out a scenario, right. which is really nice. Oh, man. Yeah. And, you know, I think when I first heard about this game, I was really nervous it would be hard to GM because you've got these different kinds of magic. There are a thousand cards. There's the suit deck. There, you know, there's a lot going on, right? Right. And I was like, how am I ever going to GM this? And it, it, like you said, it's there's so much guidance. There's it, it, it has been specifically designed to make it really easy to, uh, like, you're never stumped for ideas, right? right? The characters, the players are asked to bring stuff to the table, so it makes prep really easy, right? right. They, they are constantly coming to you with things they want to do, and so right. your job is just to, to facilitate, look through the book, and find a surreal person with a book for a head for right. them to meet, and uh, <laughs> it just, it's a delight to, this to play. This is very cool, and um, as far as this goes, what... This is at game stores or available at game stores, yeah? Um, it will be. It is. Yeah. Uh, Pre-orders are currently open right now. They, okay. The, the black cubes are on our shores and getting shipped out to Kickstarter okay. backers, getting shipped out sure. to uh, retailers. So, uh, But we do think um, the pre-orders are going unexpectedly well, so it, it will probably sell out in mm -hmm. the next few weeks. Okay, so good. I think it may go into allocation a bit for retailers. Sure. Um, which we are uh, That's excited. exciting. I, I think that means people will really, really want to pick this up or be left right. behind. And so sure. I'm very excited for and, that. And um, 
what is the price point on this on a pre-order? Yeah, uh, two hundred and forty-three dollars. Wow, but that's I mean the value is there in that you get multiple books, multiple things, over a thousand spells. Uh, there's I mean there's even <laughs> there's props package. And there's uh, the guiding hand. The GM journal. notebook, which yeah. is amazing. And uh, two other, little, maps. other little maps and and stuff. There's a lots lots of value in it, and you get this cool table talker display with the exactly. box exactly you know which is and it's a beautiful when you had it opened up at the beginning i was just like oh ah, you know and i followed the kickstarter so i was right, like i right. knew it was coming i was just like this is super cool and uh i've actually uh seen this streamed yeah oh have you yeah that's uh, i was like okay this this is a good game yeah and i think if anybody who is a fan of watching role-playing games right being streamed by the creators right you guys have a thing we hope so, and you know, it, we've been doing that before the game was launched, and so I think a number of people who had heard about the mystery of it right now get to see how it plays, and yes. are, are pretty like you know, it's yeah. it's been fun to have a stream before the game is out, so people are really hyped for it. There's Absolutely, a lot of community projects that's starting around around it. So perfect, um, very yeah. cool. So if anybody watching wants to follow Monty Cook Games and make sure that they don't miss out on any news and updates, right. Where do they go? They should go to, uh, we're basically everywhere at Monty Cook Games. So MontyCookGames.com is our, is our hub. Mm -hmm. uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, G+, at mm -hmm. Monty Cook Games. And, okay. uh, and if you want to check out our, our streaming content, where uh, we have both, both actual play and mm -hmm. we have discussions with the creators, things like that, mm -hmm. uh, you can check out our YouTube, youtube.com slash Monty Cook Games, and Twitch, twitch.tv slash Monty Cook Games. Yep. So many things, <laughs> so yeah. many platforms that we gotta we gotta be uh, cognizant of. Right, it's like, oh, So much stuff. I know. All right, so there you go, everybody. Check out Money Cook Games. Thank you, Darcy, for stopping by thank and showing so us amazing product. Uh, also, thank you to Carolina Game Tables for the this beautiful streamer table we've been able to use all weekend long. It's amazing, and we love it. And if you want to find out more about Carolina Game Tables, go over to CarolinaGameTables.com and uh, look at all the good stuff. Because this isn't the only table they got. They got lots of tables. Also, we're doing a big prize giveaway. Uh, if you go to gtmgiveaway.com, you can uh, sign up. It's a Gleam campaign, and someone is going to win a huge, huge amount of board games and accessories. And, uh, yeah, go check it out. Who knows what else might be added in. I'll tell you tonight. On, uh, I'm going to go live on the uh, Facebook page there and let you guys know some other stuff that's been added. So check that out. And on that note, I'm Rick. This is Game Trade Media coming to you live from Origins, and I'll see you at the game store. <laughs>